good afternoon, good evening, good whatever day it may be, whatever time of day it is. Um, my name is Austin Stewart. You all may have met me before or had courses with me. If not, it's nice to meet you virtually. Um, I would be showing you a picture of my face, but I look like a hermit who's been living in a cave for about a decade. So instead, you're just going to be looking at my screen. Um, so Alex Braidwood is going to be um, doing a presentation on social media. And so this presentation is more directly focused on um, developing websites, right? We have, there's, there's, a, there's a difference that needs to be discussed between having a social media presence versus having a website and why a website in particular is useful sort of as like a home base for your work. Um, to start with, typically these would be questions I would ask you and then you would respond and this would be a wonderful interactive experience for everyone. However, being that I am pre-recording this, these are questions that are now um, rhetorical, I guess. You can think about these on your own. So first, um, you know, how do you research other contemporary artists, right? Obviously, the first thing we do is we probably type their name into a search bar somewhere. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things that happen in that process. But, you know, think about the things that frustrate you in the process. One of the things that really frustrates me is if I can find, say, their Instagram account or I can find something else, but I can't find a place where, like, maybe I need more information about them. I want to know, like, where did they go to school or, you know, where do they teach? Like, if I'm maybe thinking about going to grad school and want to find, you know, work with particular artists, um, and see if there are faculty somewhere, right? These are things that are harder to find unless there's a website, um, right? And so these are all the ways that, you know, when I'm look at, when I find other contemporary artists, I use, you know, I look at all of these sources. Um, and I'm sure that many of you have gone and looked at these as well. Um, <clears throat> but as this presentation is about, websites are tight, right? They, they allow you to find all the information, hopefully, unless it's like a terribly done website, they let, they allow you to find all the information. And this is something that you as an artist that's beginning also wants to have out there. You want a place where people can look at your CV, they can look at your bio, they can read a bit more information about your artworks and, your, and the process that you go through when you're making work, right? And it's a way that, you know, you can, you can have some of that on Instagram and Facebook and all of that, but those formats are really meant to keep people up to date with what you're doing currently, right? To have that presence to, and it's a really great way for people to see the work you're doing. Um, but having a website is a nice place where people come back if they're interested in looking at more of what you've done. So I've kind of answered this question already. I'm getting ahead of myself, right? But why, right? Websites make, you know, it's just a nice solid place for people to go to look for your work, right? It's a place you can curate it in the way that you want to. People don't have to scroll through all of your Instagram posts, right? To find, to find certain projects, you can lay things out to a certain degree, however you want. And so, you know, what is a website? What does it take to make a website? Websites, right, are basically a home base. They're, you know, a set of pages. You've, we've all been to them um, before, and it's a way that you can host your content um, with a fair degree of control. So, um, these are some examples in the presentation. I usually click on a few of them to show you, um, you know, some examples here, but instead you could probably just pause the video, type in the URLs and check out some of these. They're very different and some of them require, are really fine tuned and require a lot of programming knowledge to make. Others are much more open. And we're gonna look at some other examples in a second as well. So these are all the things that you should, uh, probably have on your website, right? You should have your portfolio, you should have a biography, you should have a research statement or a, a, um, an artist statement, um, your CV, right, which is fancy academic speak for resume, um, right? So you should have your CV or your resume. And, and that should be something that's viewable, not like a PDF. You could have a PDF form linked on there, but it should be something that's on the site that people can read through um, without having to open a document. 
You should also have links to any of your your social media accounts if you do YouTube videos or do things on Vimeo, Behance, which is an Adobe sharing thing or whatever else, make sure you have those links on that site as well. Something that people can click on easily so they can make it back there. So how do we create a website, right? That's what this talk is really about, is how you go through those initial steps to create a website. And there's several parts to this process, right? Clearly, you need a place where all of these files are hosted, right? You need what's called a domain name, right? www.iloveeverybodyintheworld.com. Maybe that's your website, right? That's your domain name. And so um, to start with, we're going to talk about domain name registration. So domain name registration is basically you going on finding a name for your website and paying somebody some money to basically hold that website name for you. And so there are several places um, that will do that. And so one, I'm going to switch out of um, this presentation, hopefully. Uh-oh. And um, actually, I'm going to go back into the presentation. So these are some of the websites that allow you to do um, to register a domain name, right? And so basically, use all of them except GoDaddy.com. Those those guys are jerks. Um, but DreamHost, Squarespace, Domains.Google.com, and there's several others out there. These are just a few of the big ones. And so what does it look like to register a domain name? Now I'm actually going to exit out of the thing and jump over to Chrome. So um, when we start, um, I'm going to go with DreamHost first. Right? And so with DreamHost, um, we go ahead and go to domains up here at the top and you get this little nice search bar and you just put something in there I like everything in the whole world and then you click search and it looks like I can get um, any of these things right um, you know it looks like I like everything in the world dot com might be taken right but there's a bunch of other options here is right and you can notice that the prices vary greatly right some of these things are on sale for a dollar for a so it basically costs you a dollar for a year for that domain other ones are much more expensive like this one's twenty six dollars a year um, some are, you know, $11. It varies, right? But so people tend to remember .org, .com. Um, I use .xyz because it's cheap. Um, and it's, it's, again, it's easy for people to remember. Um, you probably don't need I like everything in the whole world .wedding. Um, but there's a range of different options out here. I think there might even be like a .studio or .art. Um, I can't remember. Um, all the different possible domain names that are out there. So, right, so you go to the thing, you click on it, you buy it, and then you own the domain. Now, usually it works best to purchase that domain name through whatever service you're going to end up using for your web hosting, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, so companies like Squarespace, um, allow you to, right, you can go to Squarespace and you can find a domain, and we'll talk about Squarespace in a bit. Um, we're also going to talk about Adobe Portfolio, which this is not the right one. There we go. Right, so Adobe Portfolio um, we'll talk about, and then Wix is another one that also um, allows you to purchase domains, right? And so you can, what, what I would suggest doing is try and figure out where you want to host your website through first, and then ideally buy a domain through them or through whatever service because it will just make it easier to make sure that everything is transferred correctly and there's a lot less work that you have to do. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. And 
we've seen this. Okay, so website hosting, right? So we've, we've started to talk about that a bit, right? Squarespace is one option, Wix. Um, DreamHost also hosts things, but they don't, um, you have to have a bit more know-how in terms of how to build a website um, and things like that. Whereas we're gonna look at Squarespace, Wix, and Adobe Portfolio um, because they have templates that make it really, really easy to quickly assemble a website without having to learn how to code in HTML or JavaScript or anything like that. Um, and really all you wanna do is you want something that looks really awesome and is easy to do because we all already want don't have enough time to do the artwork that we want to do. So we should probably spend as little amount of time doing the auxiliary stuff as possible um, to make use to make to make use of the time we have to work. So again, right, I said these are some of the options. Um, since I first made this presentation a couple years ago, Adobe Portfolio is now something that's a thing. And so I'm going to add that to the list again. Don't do GoDaddy, right? But DreamHost, Squarespace, Domains.com, uh, Google.com, and Wix are all things that you can use um, to create websites. And each one of them has a different cost associated. And um, yeah, so let's look at this website design section here. So um, I'm going to go back to Chrome. And really, I highly suggest and recommend to look at the different possibilities between Wix, Squarespace, and Adobe Portfolio. Um, Wix is um, all of these, basically all of these sites give you um, templates that you can work with. And so if I click on templates on Wix, um, you know, it has this huge list of different options. If I go under creative and go to portfolios, right, it will go through and they have these different templates. And what's nice about Wix is you can actually, um, we, even without logging in or anything, you can go through and start to edit. So you can get a sense of like how easy or hard it is to, to make differences. I haven't really, this says modern artist, so I'm just going to view this one. Um, but what's nice about Wix, Squarespace, Adobe Portfolio is that they all have what's called responsive web design. So um, you'll notice that there's this, you know, I can either view what it would look like on the computer or I can click and view what the site would look like on a phone, right? And so it automatically does all the work of rearranging everything um, for your computer screen or for a phone screen, which, right, as we know, most of us are going to be looking at things on our phones. And so that makes a big difference in in how these things are presented, right? And so um, Wix, um, the big thing with Wix um, and Squarespace um, is that, and Adobe Portfolio for that matter, is that by default, they all give you like some subdomain like your name dot Wix dot com or it's Wix dot com dot something dot something dot something, right? And what you really want is the reason you want your domain to be like, you know, austinstuart.com, which I don't actually own, um, is because that makes it so much easier for people to, to type in that web address, right? Rather than having to type out this much longer thing. Um, and it seems, it, it feels a lot more professional. And so um, with each of these, with Wix, you can do everything for free, but you do need to pay some money every month um, in order to, um, I'm going to go up here and see what their subscriptions are. If I click on their subscriptions, um, uh, basically, in order to be able to connect your domain, right, this combo package for $13 a month is their cheapest option. Um, with Squarespace, I can't remember what their costs are, um, but if I go to products and create a website. I don't know how to find out how much their stuff costs. Um, but basically, they have a set number of costs for their sites as well. And again, in order to have something that isn't, you know, 
squarespace.com backslash Austin Stewart or something like that, I would have to um, pay a certain amount of money to be able to link my domain name to the site. But again, with Squarespace and Wix, I can also purchase domain names through their sites. The other option, um, Google Domains works as well. It's again, free, but somewhat expensive later. One of the things I would suggest looking at and considering is Adobe Portfolio. And the reason that I suggest uh, this is because um, Adobe Portfolio is free when you have a subscription to an Adobe product. And in particular, um, the Adobe product that, right, that you would have access to now, you should all be able to install any Adobe product through Creative Cloud on your website, on your computer right now, because um, as a student, um, Adobe has opened this up so it's basically free for everybody to use since we're all stuck at home. And um, once you graduate, um, what you can do is, I think it's, it's $10 a month to just have access to Adobe Photoshop and to then also have Adobe Portfolio um, included as well. And it doesn't cost you anything additional to link your domain um, to Adobe Portfolio. So for 10 bucks a month, you get a portfolio site and you have access to Photoshop, which anytime you're taking images of your artwork, having Photoshop to be able to do some color correction, to be able to use it to you know, upload things for shows and, and proposals and everything else, it's a really useful tool. I feel like an Adobe salesperson right now and I apologize, um, but I feel like as in terms of just money, um, $10 a month for Photoshop and a website is pretty awesome. Um, and even now you can develop this for free as part of your Creative Cloud student account. And then once you graduate, they have a way that you can migrate it from your student account to your like non-student life afterwards. Um, you know, for us, if I was to develop through Adobe Portfolio, if I ever um, leave the university, I would essentially lose access to all of my stuff. And so I, I'd, so that's something that would be an issue for me. Um, but for everyone else, you could um, work with that. And so that's really kind of the reason why you should make a, por a portfolio website. And you should do this through one of these things that, that basically makes it as fast as possible for you. Right, because we don't all need to spend a ton of time laying out a website and everything. There's plenty of really beautifully designed templates out there. You can kind of see some of these options down here. I don't even know, um, right? But but it all works really well, and it's simple. And so yes, so go ahead, look through, figure out which one you would like to use and use it. Make sure you get a domain name registered. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily even have to be your name. It can be something, you know, silly, like there's a site called We Make Money Not Art. There's, you know, if you have like a, a company name or a brand that you want to create, um, go for it. Squarespace and um, Wix also are th something they offer that Adobe doesn't, is if you go through their e-commerce um, sites. If you want to be able to sell work online and have online sales and things like that, both of those options, Squarespace and uh, Wix, do have options that will allow you to monetize your website and be able to essentially sell work directly to people through the web. So if that's something that's in, of interest to you, you can do that as well. Um, yeah. Well, I, and I hope, I guess that's all I've got. I would usually take questions, but I can't take any questions. Uh, maybe you could email me questions later if needed. Um, but I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you aren't going too stir crazy. Um, and I wish you well.